Thomas Hobbes is going to give his political philosophy concerning the government and the reasons for the government. But before he does that, he's going to give a philosophy concerning human beings because you have to do that. You have to give your philosophy concerning human beings before you start talking about other things that involve human beings because everything is always dependent on what you think a human being is. So if you think a human being is just a piece of material, that's going to affect your political philosophy. If you think a human being has an immaterial soul, that's going to affect your political philosophy. This is what Hobbes is going to say about human beings. Human beings are equal in their desires. That seems pretty common sense right there. We do have equal desires. We all want, it, he's not saying that we all like pizza and we all like ice cream. He's saying that we all like food. Human beings have an equal desire for food. Hobbes is claiming human beings have an equal desire for water. Things like this. We are equal in our desires in, in the food and, and in the things we want to drink. That doesn't mean that we all want the same particular thing, like we all want carrots or something like this. He's just saying we all like food. We have a lot of other desires as well. We, we have desires for other people, right? So we have desires for houses, for housing. We have equal desires for things, okay? And we also have the ability to inflict damage. We can hurt each other. And it doesn't really matter how big and small you are if you really want to hurt somebody. We all have the ability to inflict damage. Even look at this little kid right here. This little kid can hurt somebody with that bat. If he goes, if he walks behind some 200 pound man and he hits him in the head with that bat, he can knock him out and he can kill him if, if he keeps hitting him while he's knocked out. And that's just a bat. Imagine it as a little kid who has a gun, a kid who has a knife. They can inflict some serious damage on someone. The reason why this can happen, why a human being can inflict so much damage, why we have like this equality of the ability to inflict damage is because we got reasoning. This is what Hobbes says. We have reasoning and we can plot, we can scheme. If you really want to hurt somebody, you can do it. And so these are the two main points that Hobbes is making concerning human beings. Hobbes says this right here. He says, and therefore, if any two people desire the same thing, which nevertheless they cannot both enjoy, they become enemies. If you got two people and there's only one piece of bread, so you have a limited amount of things that you want, guess what? They may start fighting over it. In fact, Hobbes says they are going to start fighting over it. If you have two people or two or more, it's not normally just two people. It's many people that want the same thing. So the things that we desire turn into sources of conflict because there's a limited amount of them. There's a limited amount of food or we all want a certain type of food. There's a limited amount of other people. I mean, you see this all the time. Two people, they want the same person. And so what does that lead to? It leads to conflict, all right? You have two guys, they want the same woman. You have two women, they want the same guy. They become enemies, like what Hobbes says right here. They can't normally both enjoy the same thing. If there's one piece of bread, normally one person wants the whole piece of bread. So only one person gets to enjoy it. So Hobbes further states, Hereby it is manifest that during the time men live without a common power to keep them all in awe, they are in that condition which is called war. So if there's no common power to keep human beings in awe, they are in a condition which is called war. We are in a state of conflict. And Hobbes further says, And such a war as is for every man against every man. Every, there's no friends in this game. Everybody is against everybody. Why? Because we all de desire the same things. It can be your buddy. Listen, even if you have like the best friend in the world and you both get hungry, you haven't eaten 
for 20 days and there's a piece of bread right there, you might have some conflict with that best friend of yours. Every man against every man, every person against every person. Hobbes says, for as the nature of foul weather lies not in the shower or two of rain, but in an inclination thereto of many days together. You wouldn't call something foul weather. It's like, well, we really had foul weather this year. If there's only a shower or some sprinkling, like in that picture, you have a little sprinkling on this, these blades of grass right here. You wouldn't say, boy, there was foul weather going on this year. No, but look at that picture on the right right there. It looks like it's been raining for days. In fact, in that place, I don't know where that's at, but it looks like it rains all the time. So you would say, boy, that this, this place has foul weather because it's happening all the time. Well, that's us. This conflict that we have with other people, it's happening all the time. It's like that picture on the right. We are foul with other people all the time. It's not just one or two days out of the year. So the nature of war consists not in actual fighting, but in the known disposition there too. During all the time, there is no disposition to the contrary. So this state of war doesn't have to be how you see on the movies. When you go see the movies, you see there's a war happening. People got uniforms on. You know, you can clearly see what side that people are on. He says, the nature of war where all that war comes from, by the way, because we're getting at the root of the matter, why there would even be those type of wars. The nature of war consists not in actual fighting. Okay, that comes later. But in the known disposition there too. A disposition is a natural tendency of the mind. What is the disposition? What is this state of being? Conflict. For human beings, this state of being is one of conflict. This disposition of human beings is one of conflict, is one of war. So do you think that Thomas Hobbes has a very good view of human beings at this point? No, of course he does not. He, he's saying that our nature is one of conflict. We don't get along. If you just left us out in a state of nature, we don't get along very good with other people. Right? We're gonna start fighting over things. Why? Because we want the same things. We have the same desires. Hobbes continues. He says, in such a condition, there is no place for industry, no arts, no literature, no society, no society, and which is worst of all, continual fear and danger of violent death. So this state of nature, this state of war, it is, you can't do anything here. It's like this picture right here. Does it look like in this picture, this state of war, that uh, you know people are going to university and learning about music and things like this there is no place for industry he says there's no arts no literature why because you're just trying to survive you're trying to to stay alive you're trying to not get killed by your buddy over there who wants your food so here's some points that we could take from hobbes that hobbes makes he's giving the reasons of why human beings form governments and what's the nature of the government and it's all based on the nature of the human being so we have human beings have a short and brutish life in a state of nature why is that because we all want the same things and we can all hurt each other next human beings would like a long and peaceful life you don't want to get killed for a, some, a slice of pizza that you have right we want a long and peaceful life next point the state can ensure that people act morally good through laws and harsh punishment the state the government can ensure that human beings act good how can they do this by laws and some harsh punishments why because our state of nature is not good we human beings if we are left to our own devices we kill each other so we need laws and we don't just need the laws we need some harsh penalties so the state can do this for us. The state can help us to avoid our state of nature. So the next point, human beings decide to forfeit some liberty in order to have peace. He's not saying, you know what, here I'm proposing this philosophy so that 
we can do this so that people can start doing this. He is describing what people already do. Human beings decide to forfeit some liberty in order to have peace. This is what we do. We all live in societies. We join societies naturally. And then it goes on here. Therefore, humans mutually agree upon the establishment of the state and upon the social contract. The social contract is this mutual agreement among human beings to have this government, to follow the laws, and to have harsh penalties to punish those who do not follow the law. Why? Why do we agree to this? In order to have peace. Because in the state of nature, we kill ourselves and life is short, nasty, and brutal, as Hobbes says. It's something that we already do. In other words, when you go to another society, like another town, another state, another country, you don't have, they don't give you a long sheet of paper with all the laws that they have and you have to sign off on it. Okay, I'm going to do this one. I'll agree to this one. I'll agree to this one. You don't do that when you go somewhere else. It is already assumed that you are going to follow those laws, that you are going to submit yourself to the government, that you are already, that you are going to give up some of your lim- liberty in order to, to get along in that society and have some peace there. So Hobbes, just like he explained to us the nature of human beings, he is explaining to us the nature of the government and how human beings and why human beings form governments and form societies ultimately.